This is a family SUV. You know the kind. Fashionable looks, sharp creases, funky colours. The type of car that will look good on your driveway. But if I said this car was a Ssangyong, you'd probably laugh. <laughs> no, really, it is. But before I tell you why this car is surprising, and if you're in the market for a solid, dependable SUV that should be on your shortlist, you know the drill. Subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave your comments below. There was a time when a Ssangyong was a car to be avoided. But nowadays, the Korean firm makes some pretty good cars. It's just that no one knows about them. This Corando is one of their best. It's a family SUV rivaling cars like the Nissan Qashqai. And on the outside at least, it's an impressive looking thing. Now the interior is pretty impressive as well. I mean, look at it. It's not the most stylish in the class. That award definitely goes to the Peugeot 3008, but it's not bad at all, is it? There are some nice little things going on in here. Look at this air vent that seems to extend across the top of the dashboard. That's very Audi-like. Um, and the quality in here is incredibly good. Everything feels incredibly well put together and that's something you couldn't say for the last Corando and because this is a Korean car there is lots and lots of equipment now admittedly this is the top spec ultimate edition but still you get ambient lighting you get dual zone climate control you get heated and cooled leather seats these seats are electrically adjustable as well you get a nine inch touch screen and you also you get this 10 inch display in front of you which is highly configurable you can get your apple carplay on there you can adjust all the graphics and have different combinations of different pieces of information and really not many cars in this class have that now the ambient lighting is actually worth mentioning because along with the prescribed colors on offer you can choose from the precise tone of color that you want and there's an automatic setting as well which cycles through all the colors available very much looks like a 90s disco in here at night and if you actually look at the ambient lighting it's got this weird 3d effect in the doors and in the dash it just gives this car a bit of flair actually you're even able to change the noise of the indicator sounds and the warning sounds as well quite why you'd want to do that goodness only knows but the offer is there and you get a nice little welcome and goodbye tune whenever you switch on and off the ignition listen to this Isn't that marvellous? Luckily, you can switch it off. Now, did you know Sangyong actually means double dragon and Corando stands for career can do? Yes, really. And did you also know that this car is actually perfectly pleasant to drive? Now, firstly, Sangyong has given this car a stiff suspension setup, primarily to, to rival European SUVs and they've they've pulled it off because there's very little body roll in this car and it all feels very tight and secure around corners. Another surprise is this steering. It's nice and accurate. It's pretty well weighted actually. But it's the driving position that I think is the best bit about this car because the seats are incredibly comfortable. I think they're probably some of the most comfortable in the small SUV class. And you sit very high up in the Corando, which will please people who like to buy SUVs because of their commanding driving position. You get fantastic visibility out front thanks to a sloping bonnet, which means you've got a great view out. Visibility out the back isn't quite so good, but if you go for the mid to top spec models, you get a reversing camera thrown in as standard. Now we come on to the bad bits. And firstly, 
it's that ride. And as you can probably tell from how the camera is jangling around, a stiff suspension setup is great for cornering because it keeps the body in check. And there's no complaints for the, with the Corando in that regard. But it does mean that the ride can get very choppy. And it really does get choppy in the Corando. At low speeds, at city speeds, for instance, any pothole, any bump in the road, and the Corando just bumps and jitters all over it. It's not very smooth at all. Having said that, the ride does level out at motorway speeds. Now we come to this car's big black mark, and that's its engine and gearbox range. Now I would recommend going for the 1.6 litre diesel, partly because um, it's got a bit more torque, it's a little bit quicker and more responsive than the petrol, but also um, it's the more flexible engine actually. Now the Crando is very unique in the small SUV class because if you go for the four wheel drive diesel, it can tow loads weighing up to two tons. And that is really quite remarkable in this class because things like a Sportage or a Cougar or something like that probably can only pull around 1500 kilos. This is a very flexible and practical car. But if you don't want to go for a diesel, and I can understand that, you get, you're left with the 1.5 litre turbo petrol. And it's not this car's best attribute. The engine is very whiny, and it's not that pleasant. And with 163 horsepower, it's not that powerful either. Now, if you do go for the petrol, I would recommend going for the six-speed manual. The automatic is fine for most of the time, but sometimes it can get a little bit caught out and it's a bit hesitant, especially pulling out of junctions when you need to pull away quickly, perhaps in the city, and it just is a bit of a mixed bag. And that's one of the big problems with the Corando is you only get the choice of two pretty average engines. In Rivals, there's much more of a greater choice. Now, not only is this engine a little bit whiny and not that responsive, it's also not particularly fuel efficient either. Now, in my 300 miles in this car, I've been averaging just over 32 mpg, which isn't great in this day and age. Another reason to go for the diesel, because that can average up to 46. Now, I know, it sounds like I've got a downer on this car, but I haven't. I happen to think the diesel 4x4 version is one of the most adept small SUVs on sale, especially if you need a car to work in all weathers and one you can utterly rely on. Prices range from £20,000, which is cheap, to just under grand, which is too much. A petrol manual in Ventura spec at just under 24 seems all right, and a diesel 4x4 at 29,000 seems good value. Factor in tons of rear space, a large boot, and loads of standard toys, and the Crando is very recommendable. Buy one of these, and you won't be following the crowd, which is a very, very good thing. <laughs>